Howdy friends. I'd like to take you along on some of the chores and maintenance tasks that I do with the Tiger Moth in advance of a big trip. And I'd also like to show you some of the upgrades and modifications that I've made to make the camper safer and more enjoyable to use. Okay, my camper comes with this five gallon jerry can. Since it's been sitting for a while, I'm gonna get it cleaned out. I'll clean up the bracket that holds it to the camper. Add a little bit of soap, do some rinsing, and repeat that process until it's filled with fresh, clean tap water. Okay, I'll get it strapped back in with this metal cam buckle and webbing, and really get it ratcheted down. I've also replaced the standard spigot with a stainless steel food grade one, and it's a noticeable improvement. All right, that job's done. This is my first experience maintaining a deep cycle lead acid battery. And from what I understand, I just need to keep an eye on the voltage and keep it topped off as much as possible. Of course, there's always a little bit of maintenance here and there, and I took the opportunity to replace one of the buckles on the rooftop tent that had cracked. Of course, there's the trailer hitch. I'm bringing this out of storage, it's all dusty. Getting it cleaned and lubed, getting the receiver cleaned and lubed, and making sure that the ball head is torqued really, really tight. According to the manufacturer's recommended torque settings. And I do keep that big wrench on hand to periodically check the ball. A problem that I've had at various campgrounds is that there's not an obvious place to process wood. On top of that, the wood that you buy at those campgrounds is often fairly wet. The result is that people are often struggling to start fires, they're smoky, and there's not a lot of ways to gather kindling material given the rules of state and national parks. So my solution to this is to bring a mini stump that I can place on the ground, get in a safe kneeling position, and do some batoning to process the larger wet wood down into something that'll help me establish a good coal bed and have a nice fire. All right, packing her up. I got the foam mattress topper, a nice zero degree bag, wool, blankets, four camp chairs, a nice crate full of tarps and camp Equipment. Honestly, y'all, like it's a lot of stuff. Supplies, a little a small and if you want to learn more about my complete packing list, I'll put a couple of links in the description so you can see the specific items that I like to bring. Now here's my walnut climbing hole that I hand carved. It's surprising to me how important it is to have a couple of doormats when you go camping. And I'm not talking about Aunt Jenny. And uh, yeah, we just pack up the ones that we have at the house and bring them along. This year we went back to Colorado and what you're seeing here is the base camp after a few days of four people living out of the camper and the tent. Each campground is a bit unique. Privacy varies. Number of trees for hanging things like clotheslines or hammocks is going to vary. This one happened to be a pretty open site, close to our neighbors, with a fair number of people walking by on the road. This gave me the idea of trying to create my own unique annex underneath the tent using some canvas and maybe even figuring out a way to put a chair or something underneath there so like you could actually hang out under there. More on the awning project in just a minute. One of the things that happened during the trip is that my wife, while she was moving something in and out of the camper, hit her head actually a couple times on the fan handle on the roof or ceiling of the camper. So what you're seeing here is my attempt at creating a new version of a ceiling fan handle. And so I ended up using these little nuggets of white oak, sections of leather, 
attached to a walnut grip. I've also added a rubbery foam bump guard to the spine of the ceiling because that's the most likely place where you're going to bump your head. Another fun aspect of owning a trailer is personalizing it. And working with wood gave me the idea to create a decorative veneer on the handle to the swing out door. It's made out of walnut. It's got some one inch holes drilled into it and it's secured with VHB tape because I didn't want to make any permanent changes. But this is kind of a nice aesthetic that is also a bit practical because it allows better clamping to that thin rail for accessories. So taking the opportunity to clean the bugs off of the tent and off the trailer after a long trip, it's pretty easy to do. The paint is tough and cleans up nicely. Okay, let's come back to this tent annex project. It starts with this thin metal chair that I got for a dollar in Missoula, Montana at a rummage sale. It's always had a rattle, so I'm gonna do a crude fix with a stick welder, clean it up, put some paint on it, make it decorative. Ultimately, it's gonna fit on the tongue of the trailer so that I have an extra chill out space, especially if it's raining or just need a little time to myself. I picked up this waxed canvas in Denver. I'm going to do a seam reduction hem all around the perimeter. I'll punch some holes for some grommets. Add a bunch of grommets, brass, and then I'll hang it as a privacy screen. It can also double as a sunshade. And I really like the way that it turned out. I hope you've enjoyed getting a glimpse into some of the ways I've personalized the Tiger Moth camper trailer. I appreciate you tuning in. Stay well, and we'll see you next time.